and then we'll begin. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our virtual career day series with the Los Angeles Public Library. My name is Lynn Wynn, and I'm here today with my co-host Jessica Levy from Palisades Branch. She's right in the corner. You'll see her over there. We're so excited to have you here for our weekly virtual career day series where we introduce amazing careers and amazing people to you. Today, we have two amazing guest speakers from Google and YouTube here to share some tips, tricks, and provide you with some insight on how they got into their administrative professions. Uh, we would like to extend our deepest thanks to all of you, our participants, for being here with us today. Our guest speakers, the Library Foundation, and the Friends of the Chinatown Branch Library for their generous support. Before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping rules. Your microphones are already muted, so you do not, and you do not need to have your videos turned on. Recording is in progress. If you wish to ask questions at any time during the program, you can type that into the chat box, or you can wait uh, till our Q&A at the very end to unmute yourself. So uh, we hope that you do ask any questions that come to your mind. Please don't be shy. We're all here to learn from each other. And uh, at the very end of the program, we do have a very short survey for you to fill out. So please do take a moment to fill that out so we can share your responses with our guest speakers. Okay, so with that being said, I would like to ask all of you to open up your chat box. It's located at the very bottom of your Zoom. You'll see the icon that says chat. You can open that up. And the popcorn question for all of you is, what or who is your favorite YouTuber? Does anybody here have a favorite YouTuber? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, could, I could go first. I like. I like Bretman Rock. <laughs> I also like a couple. Oh yeah, Bretman Rock. Yeah, he's my favorite. He's so funny. A lot of people here like Bretman Rock. Okay. Oh, Alicia Marie. She actually follows me on Instagram. Yeah, she's really cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna turn it over to Jessica here to begin our interview with Ashley. Thanks everybody. Hey, thank you so much, Lynn. Thanks to our guests for being here today. So I'm gonna introduce our first guest, Ms. Ashley Hayes. So Ashley is an administrative business partner on the YouTube content partnerships team. In her pre-tech life, she did four years of the Japanese exchange and teaching program in Nagano city, and then worked at a translation firm in Tokyo. An Atlanta native, she now lives in LA with her partner, her seven month old son and two fun dogs. She enjoys reading, time at the beach, and studying foreign languages. Thank you so much, Ashley, for being here today. Sure, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So tell us, you work at YouTube in the business admin side. Can you tell us more about what your job is and what your daily work life is like? Sure. Um, I'm on the content partnerships team. So our team is the one that works closely with YouTube creators to help them like build their channels, build their audiences, uh, make the most of the YouTube platform. Um, and so the specific team that I work with focuses on content in the areas of learning, social impact, kids and family, racial justice and human rights. So it's a really like, oh, and health also more recently. Um, so it's a really obviously like important area of content on the platform and, and it's really an interesting and engaging space to work in. Um, as far as my day to day, it's a lot of, um, it's kind of like you in this role as an admin, you don't really know what the day is going to throw at you. You try your best to plan and make things run smoothly, but um, you kind of have to approach the day like as it comes, uh, whether it's like setting up last minute meetings or trying to get your director across the country or in another country for something important back when we were traveling at least, um, or, or similarly trying to like figure out what is YouTube's company response to like the coronavirus pandemic going to be. It's really, it's like all over the place. Um, so keeps me on my toes. I will be in the role that I've been doing for six years later this month. So yeah, it's been fun. And so is your day mostly meetings? Like how, or in pre-COVID pre times, would you be doing a lot of in-person meetings? What kind of um, rhythm is that? Yeah, so for me, it's, um, so I support a VP and he is in meetings wall to wall <laughs> almost every day. Um, so when I'm, when I'm not like kind of organizing his schedule and, and helping him out directly, I would work on projects on the side or work on projects with other admins um, or work on my director's travel. 
Uh, and then there are other little things like expense reports or like space planning. It's really kind of um, the admin role is really kind of the the person who keeps the the wheels of the team going and makes sure that like while our executives are handling handling kind of the larger kind of high level like company projects and things like that, we're on the ground like making sure the important day to day stuff happens. Right, you're making sure it's all running smoothly. So yeah. if we jump back in time in high school, did you see yourself going in this direction? <laughs> not at all. I, I didn't know yeah. this kind of job existed really. I guess I guess that's not true because like in, in I guess some more kind of uh, like antiquated sense, the role I'm doing is similar to that of like a secretary, but m modern day admins take on so much more than just like answering phones and like uh, what you call it, like making coffee and things like that, like more kind of like stereotypical um, secretarial roles. But when I was in high school, to answer your question, I had my heart set on becoming a broadcast journalist. And <laughs> I went to like a magnet high school for communication. Shout out to Grady High School, ATL. Um, <laughs> And uh, and yeah, I was on like the 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 GNN, the Grady News Network team. I also participated in uh, youth radio, so I had like like the TV side and the radio side covered. And I just knew that like when I graduated, I was become gonna become a foreign correspondent in Tokyo. I had it all planned out. And then I did an internship <laughs> at a news station, and it was like, ooh, maybe this isn't the life I want. <laughs> what about that? What about it turned you off? Um, it was just kind of so like high stakes, cutthroat, stressful, like all the time that it was hard to kind of enjoy the things that from the outside looking in, I thought I would enjoy about it. Um, so it is kind of ironic now that I am still working in like the media space um, and my job is still at times very, <laughs> very high stress, like very kind of like there could be some tense moments, but there's enough of a balance in what I'm doing now where, yeah, I can appreciate like the exposure to, to media and the exposure to like, like a global community of users and things like that and like opportunities to travel sometimes, but also feel like I can have a more like balanced day-to-day uh, -day life. Right, that makes sense. So that was in the internship, was that in high school or in college? The, oh, the internship was actually in college. Yeah. College. Okay. So following college, what was your path like straight out of college? What, what was your first job? Yeah. So um, straight out of college. So yeah, I had, I had this idea, like I said, foreign correspondent in Tokyo. So I was like, okay, like internship covers the journalism piece. I need to have experience living in Japan. So I applied to the Japan exchange and teaching program um, for a role as a coordinator of international relations. So there's in the JET program, you can do like teaching where you are like actually working in a school as a classroom teacher, or you can do the coordinator of international relations role where you're placed in like a local government office handling kind of like the international affairs for the city. Um, so I opted for the latter role because I really wanted more opportunities to like grow my language skills and things like that. Um, and it was a lot of fun working in that office because I got to like interact with a lot of other foreign residents and try to help them solve their problems. I got to help organize events, um, was instrumental in our sister city relationships. So like bringing in students and teachers and chaperones from Clearwater, Florida to come to Nagano to like get the Nagano experience and then also helping like folks from Nagano go to Florida to see what that was like. Um, so in retrospect now, it was actually kind of similar to the role that I'm like the admin role in the sense that I was, I was like in the office there kind of helping to solve problems um, as they came up, like whatever kind of situations got thrown at us and just try to help the international relations office accomplish their goals as well as possible. Yeah, so then coming back from that program, you returned to the U.S. and moved to L.A. and started at YouTube. Is that so? Yes. Yeah. So, so then, yeah. When I came back to America from Japan, I was kind of like, you know what? I did the Japan thing, and that was my dream. I'm not sure what I want to do now. <laughs> so, so I literally was like, hmm. I heard that Google is a nice place to work, like the best place to work in the country. So, let me see if there are any roles there that might be something that I could actually do. And it's funny because like at that time, I envisioned Google as a tech company, 
So I thought it was a place where only like engineers and product managers and people like that could work. I, I never would have imagined that there was like a business side and that a place like Google also needs HR personnel and finance people and lawyers and um, and even because we have like all kinds of amenities like fitness coaches and like chefs and things like that. There's there's really like <laughs> we need everything. So I um I went to like Google.com slash jobs and like did some searching and came upon the administrative assistant role and like read through the requirements. I was like, oh, this seems like something that I could do well. It seems like my experience kind of aligns with what they're looking for. So I literally just like applied on the website and like thank thank the gods of employment. Uh, they decided to, <laughs> to look at my application and yeah, <laughs> pick me. <laughs> that's so, that's great. And so what was your, um, forgive me for not knowing the full story, but between Google and YouTube, what happened? Uh, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, so, um, so I worked at Google proper as an assistant on the research team for a couple of years. And then I had a coworker who was leaving Google to start an ed tech startup. And at the time I was like, oh, this sounds like a really cool opportunity too. I'm still in the tech space. Like I know these folks, like some great people from my team are um, leaving to kind of explore this opportunity. So that um, led me to leave Google at that time to, to take on a role at the ed tech startup. And then ultimately after a year that I was like, you know, like startup life is cool, but I don't know if it's for me. Again, it was one of those kind of like, I tried this, but I think I like that other thing better. <laughs> so I, I was fortunate enough to have a girlfriend who was still working at Google who was like, oh, actually this role opened up in LA. Like that's something you should check out. And I looked at it and it was with um, the manager that I'm still working for. So yeah, that, that was the role that I took in 2015 and have been on the same team ever since. Amazing. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing all that. So what would you say have been the most rewarding moments in your job that you've had for the last five, six years? Rewarding moments, I guess, um, really like some of them have come in the last year or so just seeing like the impact that my team has been able to make for for users in dealing with like the coronavirus situation and like being at home um like for example pretty like not not too far into the pandemic last year the learning team was able to launch like a a standalone web page called i think it was called like learning learning at home with youtube um, where we shared all kinds of resources on the platform for, for people, people who want to do like just regular learning or like academic learning, which is especially important for our parents and families since schools were closed. And um, on the kids side, our team created like hundreds of playlists um, that were related to like health and the pandemic type um, information. And yeah, so it's just been great to see how like, yes, we're, we're a video platform and people know us for being entertaining and, and know us for like viral videos and like cats on skateboards and stuff like that. But <laughs> there's also like so much enriching content on there and stuff that can really like inform people and change their minds and make their lives better. So it's happy to see that in play. That's great. And that's and you, the baby. Aw, <laughs> that's the other great thing that happened. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Um, are there any other, you did mention travel, obviously not, I'm sure not since uh, the pandemic began, but prior to that, were you, uh, where were some of the places that you might have traveled for work? Oh, so, um, yeah, one of the things when I was, when I originally started at YouTube, I was supporting not just content partnerships, but also the YouTube originals team. So I made a point of like letting my managers know like, hey, if you guys ever have any uh, business trips to Tokyo, I'd be happy to like tag along as your personal assistant slash interpreter person. So um, I actually got to do two business trips to Tokyo uh, for work um, and attend partner meetings with my managers to help like interpret and and help like help make sure they were able to get around more easily. And um, for a while I was also working on translating some of the scripts and like materials that were coming in for the YouTube originals uh, programming slate, because we have like folks in Japan creating content for, um, for that audience as well. So, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was, it was kind of, it felt like life was full circle. Like, like my Japanese was able to be used in like my current job and like, right. yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a pretty fun time. 
Yeah, I want to emphasize that, especially since we have so many great teens listening today. Um, do you have any, uh, I mean, obviously a big piece of advice there is, hey guys, speak up at your job, you know, get to know what's going on. And, and I guess from what you're saying, tell people what you're interested in and offer to help. Do you have any uh, tips about like how to do that the right way so that you're heard? <laughs> like when yeah, you said, guess... yeah. Yeah, just um, I think being open and transparent with like your your manager and your coworkers is like the biggest thing. Like something that you hear a lot of people say is like, or something that we like to say at Google is that you're welcome to bring your whole self to work. And so bringing your whole self to work means letting people know that like you speak Japanese and that you're obsessed with K-pop and that you like <laughs> took surfing classes like. <laughs> for a, a few weekends and things like that, um, which, yeah, can come up in uh, meetings, maybe sometimes, but also just like in casual conversation kind of. And, and then and then, too, it's up to you to be kind of, I guess, I guess vigilance, not like the right, the, the perfect word, but just like keep your eyes open and, and look for areas where like a special skill that you have or a special interest that you might have could fill in a gap or like a business need. Thank you for that. And what have been some of the challenges of your job, whether or not it's been over the past year? Challenges, I would say um, being a type A, like overachiever, Hermione Granger type person. <laughs> like, one of the challenges has been just kind of like learning how to uh, balance, like wanting to do well at work and like flex my work ethic, but also knowing when to like turn things off and disconnect. I definitely um, <laughs> was like borderline going to burn myself out the first couple of years at Google, just like, like I have to get through like every every single email I got today, like before today's over. And, and at one point my manager was like, you don't need to be sending, like responding to emails about a one-on-one -on -one that's gonna happen on Friday at like 11.35 at night on Monday, like calm down. <laughs> so so I think uh, prioritization is kind of like the biggest thing, like, like having a good sense of like, okay, what is actually urgent, like must get done today before I log off versus like, what can people wait on and like, and uh what you call it kind of monitoring not monitoring or like like being being responsive but not like reactive so like not like not just like jumping on everything as it comes to you be like okay this person's coming at me with like this is urgent right now but like is it really urgent right now or is it urgent to you but is it like urgent to me is it urgent to my manager so kind of tempering your response that's what i was trying to say yeah so are there any other uh, qualities you would say one should really have for this type of job. You you mentioned like pretty much being pretty organized, um, being able to prioritize and be efficient. But anything else that you would recommend? Yeah, um, for sure. the The two that come to mind are resourcefulness and ability. Resourcefulness because oftentimes you're presented with problems that like you that like are important to your manager, but he or she may not have time to solve them. Or like, it's just, it's just like, like here, take this thing and like fix it. <laughs> so, so it's up to you to kind of uh, be aware of all the tools that are at your disposal and, and to also like acknowledge, like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this or how to do with this. I should go ask someone for help and, and, and know like, when, when you can handle it yourself and when you're gonna need to like pull in someone for help or go like look elsewhere for the answer. Um, and I say adaptability because kind of like I was saying earlier, you can have like the calendar and like your plan, everything packaged up beautifully like tonight, but then tomorrow you don't know what's gonna happen and you have to be like ready to deal with it. Not like, but but I had everything like organized and perfect. It's like, oh, that was nice yesterday, but today things are on fire. So you need to be mm -hmm. able to, put the fire out when it comes. Mm -hmm. Adaptability. Yes, that's a good skill for a lot of different jobs and scenarios as well. Mm -hmm. um, are there, we always want to know, are there any internship, I'm assuming there are internship possibilities, but do you know of anything specifically either in your department, um, at YouTube, Google, that even high school students could have a chance at? Yeah, high school, perhaps high school. Um, the one that comes to mind for high school is the, com I think it's called the Computer Science Summer Institute, CSSI program. So if you if you Google it, um, it'll probably come up. 
And that's for students who are like, like it says, interested in computer science specifically. Um, but for just more generic internships, there are ones available both on the business side and the tech side for students once you're in college. So for undergraduates and graduates. And for that, you would go to careers.google.com slash student. Yes, I looked it up before this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to um, be sure. Thanks, and I Lynn. think, yeah, that, I think we'll oh, put yeah, it in the chat. Perfect, or, perfect. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so that's the place to go. Um, and I would say, even, even if it's not, even if there aren't like specifically high school um, internship opportunities available, like at Google, I would still like look around like LA and see if there are like startup companies that maybe have opportunities that you're interested in or volunteer organizations where you can try to grow some of the same skills that would be like applicable to a role whatever role you'd be interested in google later just to like kind of get the get the gears turning and also kind of help you go through the process i did of like let me try this oh that's not what i thought it was going to be let me try something else or like i i love this like i'm going to stay on this path till death do us part <laughs> No, that's great. I think you explained that pretty well. It's really important to try different things and don't be afraid to, to go down a new path as it works out or doesn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. um, so what are, okay, big question. How do you define success in your life, in your career? How do I define success in my life and my career? I guess, um, I think it's, I think it's defined as like, like, do I feel like I'm making a contribution while also kind of taking care of myself and like my family and the people around me kind of like having a balance of both. And also like, am I happy? Not just in kind of like the happy, like gee -he sense, but kind of the more kind of like, am I, am I content? Like, is, is everyone doing well? Like, am I making a difference to, to someone? Thank you. Um, and it sounds like you can achieve that in your position. So that sounds really great. Um, do you have any advice for, you know, looking back, if you were to tell your 18 year old or 17 year old self, um, like what the future might be like, what would you tell yourself? Like, as far as a career goes, anything that you would have done differently? Yeah, I think um, when I was in high school, like I said, I was an overachiever and like at that time I felt like the stakes were so high. I remember um, I got a B in AP physics and I think like the last semester of high school and I, I, I like really beat myself up about it and thought my life was going to be over. I was like, no, I'll never be salutatorian. Like, <laughs> but it's, so I want to like go back to 18 year old Ashley and just tell her to like, like, like calm down. <laughs> like you don't need to put so much pressure on yourself. Like a lot of the things that, a lot of the things that you're worried about are really important, but they, they won't make or break you. Like either ways, like, just like, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Like, like keep doing well, but also like simmer down. Yes. I know we have a lot of high achievers here. So that's great advice. And do you, okay. So work aside, yes, you have a family to take care of as well, but what can you do? What do you do to just relax and take the pressure off yourself? Um, well now, like, since we're pretty stuck at home, my favorite thing to do is like, like once a week bath night where I get like my, my nice bath salts and, and, uh, and like take a nice bath with a book. Actually, that's, that's pretty much my, my decompression, like, like Saturday night, bath with a book, bath salts, fragrances, candles. <laughs> Librarians <laughs> love the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then when I can, I like to get to the beach and, you know, similarly like read at the beach and just like walk around and listen to the waves, be in a blue space. <laughs> that's great. So thank you so much, Ashley. I know our audience may have questions. Um, I want to give time for Lynn to interview our next guest. So thank you. And do you have any last words though before we turn it over? Last words, I guess. Inspiration, advice. <laughs> just, um, yeah. Languages. Yeah, be... <laughs> what languages are you studying next, Ashley? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use Duolingo. No. Um, I do, would just say, do. Uh, yeah, you do. Awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, which like yeah, shame shameless plug. I'm I'm rocking 830 days of streak over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, use Duolingo and also yeah, just just like 
be be honest with yourself like be easy on yourself and do the best you can well put and with that i'm gonna say thanks and turn it over to lynn thank you thank you jessica thank you ashley that was amazing so i would love to introduce all of you to our next guest her name is jessica hackett jessica is a newly administrative business partner on the marketing team at google Previously, she was an event coordinator at Converse headquarters in Boston, and then an event coordinator at Google prior to her current role. She, she's always had a love for hosp the hospitality world, but is also passionate about American Sign Language and the deaf community. You can always find her color coding everything in sight, reading and or listening to a good book and planning fun virtual events for her friends and family. Wow, <laughs> she sounds like my person because I love parties. <laughs> Anyways, Jessica, we are so happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your job. You know, what does your day-to-day -day job look like? Yeah, hi. Um, I mean, I feel like I really covered <laughs> the best parts of me in that little intro. But um, yeah, so I'm in the same role as Ashley is. So administrative business partner or ABP as we call it. The only difference is I'm on the Google proper side under the marketing team versus she falls under the YouTube family. Um, and the day-to-day -day stuff looks very similar. Everything she was saying, I was like nodding and agreeing like, yep, <laughs> I agree to everything. Um, so yeah, and I'm, I am newly in my role now. So I'm still getting my feet wet. I'm still trying to stay afloat in this role and figure out my, my road and my path that I'm on. But it's, it's the same. It's calendar management. It's making sure my team is successful. Um, the way I see it and the way I, it kind of helps me understand the role is I'm there to make sure that the people and the execs that I support can do their job to the best of their ability so that Google can be successful. And if, and if I can't do my job, they can't do their job. And then the whole thing falls apart, right? So yeah. it's this huge key piece um, that the administrative business partner plays to just keep the ball rolling and keep everybody successful. Wow, I love that. Um, I, I, I'm looking at all the roles that you've played or that you've um, you know, been in before. And it seems like you're a very well-organized person as an event planner. So can you kind of walk us back, um, you know, let's, let's say from high school, like, did you always know that you were going to be an event planner or did you love event planning when you were a young teen? So I used to tell my mom as a kid, I wanted to be a birthday party planner. Like that was like what I wanted to do. <laughs> Mainly because I loved birthday parties. That was, and maybe it was just for the cupcakes and the food and stuff, but I honestly loved and I'm an extrovert at heart. So just being at the parties, being around people, I've always loved that. Um, and I do, I have that type A personality as well of being organized and like looking at things that make sense and <laughs> color coded to the way that my brain works. So I did know I wanted to be in the event sphere. Um, I majored in hospitality at, at, in college. So I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, I was super lucky to find those roles that I was in prior to this one. Did you um, do any uh, internships in hospitality when you were in college? Oh yeah, so I went to Boston University for, for school and I think my junior year is when I started and somebody was like, oh, you should intern with the BU events office. And I was like, what, there's a BU events office? Like how have I gone this long and not heard of this? And I think the next day I was like down at the office saying, how do I, how do I get involved here? I'll volunteer. I'll be here on weekends. I don't care what it is. Just like get me in. Um, and there was actually an internship that I applied for and got. That's awesome. I love how determined you were. You just showed up. You're like, I'm here for this, please. Like, you know, tell yes. me what I need to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so after you, um, you know, you, you went to Boston University, you did your internship. Um, and then after that, what was the job market like for you when you applied for your first job out of college? Yeah. So like I said, I was in Boston. Um, I'm from LA originally and graduating, I was like, my whole network was in Boston, right? All of my professors, everybody I had met. Um, so I knew I was gonna have to stay in Boston for those first two years after college just because it made sense for my career. Um, and I want to say actually the, the Converse headquarters role, the job posting I found on LinkedIn, I want to say, and it didn't tell me it was, it was Converse headquarters at first. It was just like special events coordinator and listed like the job requirements and everything. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is exactly what I want to do. 
um, applied for it, got a phone interview, and then they told me to come in for an in-person interview. And that's when I found out it was Converse headquarters. Like nobody told me prior to that. So I showed up and was just like instantly wowed, like, like uh, my jaw on the floor. <laughs> it was so cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was just like a luck of chance that I saw that on LinkedIn one day, honestly. That's so great. That's such a, LinkedIn is such a great resource that I hope a lot of our teams take advantage of. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a professional social network where you can look for jobs online and also have like your, you know, resume on there so people can kind of see what you're up to or what you've been doing uh, career wise. But I, I love that you just went on LinkedIn and, and applied. And then uh, so when you walked into Converse and you're like, hey, I'm here. How long did you stay at that job position? I was there for, was it two and a half years, almost three years. Um, and I loved it. It was honestly so much fun. And if you can imagine, there's, it's just sneakers everywhere. There's fun things and Converse is owned by Nike. So there was a ton of partnership with Nike and the events that we did were just huge. And sometimes we brought in like NBA players because they all had partnerships with Converse or whatever it was and all these high profile events. Um, and I was really lucky. I had a team of people that I was supporting that were just awesome. And you know, what's actually funny is I walked into that interview in like very business professional wear because college prepares you for that. And I had to get rid of everything after that interview because Converse is so laid back. Like everyone wears jeans and sneakers and Google is very similar too. It's very casual. So I can say to this day, I don't have a pencil skirt. I don't have a blazer. I don't have any of that anymore. <laughs> Lots of sneakers. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, uh, did you, uh, I was going to say, so after, uh, did you get into sneakers after that? I mean, since you were at Converse for a while and you're like, oh, I'm going to start buying up all these sneakers and learn about it. And <laughs> Oh yeah, I was totally a sneaker head and that's something I would never say or describe myself as prior to that. And, but in that role, it was like, if you walk down the hall wearing like the sequin Converse, people are like, oh my God, are those on sale? Are those down at the store? Like, where did you get those? <laughs> That's just sort of the climate. So, and there was all these different colors. That's cool. So after um, you finished at Converse, uh, you know, you you took the leap of faith mm -hmm. and you jumped over to Google. So how did how did that mm -hmm. ended up happening? And then now you're at Google. Yeah. So I actually, my manager at Converse knew the event manager at Google, and there's a Google office in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is right outside of Boston. Um, and she was like, you should meet her just to connect, just to grow your network or whatever. And I did. And so I had a phone call with her that was only supposed to be like 30 minutes and ended up being like an hour and a half, I think, um, just because we connected and I was like so enthralled with Google. And it's the same as Ashley. Like I had no idea Google had this whole other side of roles outside of being an engineer. And once I learned that, I was like, this is amazing. I can go work at this massive company with all of these great perks and still do the job that I love and still be an event coordinator. So um, yeah, actually, and then, so I connected with her and then that event manager told me about the open role here in LA and that's how I sort of ended up back here. And this is home for me. So it honestly, the stars aligned. <laughs> wow. So now as um, now that you, you're an administrative person in the marketing team, um, what, what is it like to work with the marketing team of Google? Yeah, it's honestly, because I'm only three weeks into it, it was overwhelming at first with all the acronyms. And this is just something Google is like famous for. There's acronyms for everything, even people's names. <laughs> so, um, but I am so enthralled and amazed by the world of marketing at Google. It's, and I, the, the team I'm on is small and medium businesses. So think of like the mom and pop shops um, and just connecting them with Google's products, right? So Google has a whole slew of different things and products that they offer and just connecting them with those businesses. Um, and it's, the team is huge. It's massive. There's so many different businesses out there. There's so many different products. So it's honestly, it's just amazing to be near and be available to watch it. That's awesome. I know that you you said that you've just been doing this job for your three weeks in, um, and I know it might be hard to talk about the rewards and the challenges, but what are some goals that you hope to accomplish uh, on the team of marketing at Google? Yeah, um, I think, and Ashley kind of mentioned this too about how Google's very, bring your whole self to work, get involved in things that interest you. Um, and I know you said, I 
has a huge passion for American Sign Language and the deaf community and accessibility. Um, so I have this massive goal of working on a team or supporting somebody in an administrative role that who's deaf and using sign language in my day-to-day -day job every single day. Like that would just be a dream. I'd probably go home and cry every day because I'm so happy <laughs> with this role I'm in. Um, and that's something I can definitely do at Google. That's something that I can bring forward and be like, hey, this is a huge goal of mine. And they're going to be like, all right, how do we get you there? Like, what are the steps we can take to get you there? So it's super supportive. For sure. No, that's awesome. Google sounds great. <laughs> do they need a librarian? <laughs> um, yeah, no, this is wonderful. I, you know, I, I love hearing that there are so many different roles at Google because I think a lot of times, like what Ashley was saying earlier, is that when we think of Google, we're thinking like, oh, it's probably just a bunch of software engineers, cloud engineers, like tech people. They don't think about, you know, who's working behind the scenes to make the whole the company as a whole. So this is so wonderful to hear. Uh, what are some what are some career highlights that you know I, I know you've been to Boston to there and then working at Converse like so far you know you've had th these many years of working uh, in, in the field of, of event planning what are some career highlights that you just absolutely you know always talk about that makes you really excited oh about your job. <laughs> um, so in my in my event coordinator role with Google, I plan for Accessibility Week, which is a week to highlight all things surrounding the accessibility sphere. I planned a um, like a fireside chat, or where we bring somebody on to just talk to talk to Googlers in the community. And I brought Niall Demarco on site. And I don't know if anybody knows him, but he was um, the first male model to win America's Next Top Model. He's also just huge in the deaf community and beautiful and I got to bring him on site for that event and I was his point of contact right so I had to make sure he got into the building okay make sure we went to lunch um just all of that stuff so I was using sign language all day long made sure his interpreter was on site made sure you know all of those different um aspects of the event ran well but all of it in sign language and that if you know anybody at Google that I've worked with it's they're gonna know that that's something I talk about all the time <laughs> I love it. And I love him. I used to watch America's Next oh my. Top Model. <laughs> oh, yes. man, that's great. Well, I, what are some, uh, what do you think teams will gain from becoming an event planner? And, and what do you think are some good qualities for anyone uh, or for any of our teams to, to have um, in order to be part of a, an administrative team at Google? Yeah, so a lot of the things I think even in high school, you could probably tell like my planner was super nice, neat, tidy. Like I kept a calendar really clean. I crossed days off as they went. I color coded based on classes. Um, and that's that very like type A overachiever role, right? <laughs> I was very in that. Um, but I was also, I really liked going to like the different events. So planning prom, I was on the committee for that or just helping teachers. I think I was a TA for like every semester from sophomore year on. I just loved being in that kind of role. And now looking back, it wasn't obvious back then, right? Because I didn't know I was going to be an event coordinator and then administrative business partner. But all of those qualities that I had fit so nicely with these roles. So I hope I would want like people in high school to just like take those things that come so easily and so naturally to you that things that you enjoy and then match those over and see what you can find in a professional career. Sure. Has this pandemic affected your job in any way? Only in the way of like events going virtual, which was kind of, there was definitely a learning curve. And I think we're all still learning, right? Cause it is a little awkward, everybody joining mm -hmm. and then people not being on mute, that kind of stuff. Um, but, and I think the biggest part is like just the, the person interaction and people who are extroverted and people who thrive on being in an office atmosphere. How do we make sure those people are seen? Uh, how do we make sure that they still feel a part of the team? Um, that's that's been a, just something to work through for the past year that, and I don't think we'll ever get it perfect, right? Because it's just not the same as being in person, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Uh, what are some of your favorite resources that you use every day um, that you can recommend to our teams? And are there any internship opportunities I, that you that you did or that you are aware of in your side of marketing um, that you could recommend? Yeah, um, 
resources. I don't know. I think LinkedIn is a huge one. And I still go on LinkedIn every day. And I've been in, I've loved every career I've been in. I've never been like looking for a new job in a sense. It's always just sort of kind of happened, but I love staying on top of LinkedIn and seeing what's open in my field and the people around me and what they're doing and staying connected to them. Um, I'm trying, what was the second part of that question? Resources uh, and then- like over, Yeah, resources that, resources that you use every day as, as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that um, honestly, I've been using, I've been in the Gmail sphere since college because that's what our college used. <laughs> and I use Google Sheets for even just like personal things like keeping my finances in order. I use I use my Google calendar and my personal one, not even my work one for planning like Zoom events like this one with my friends. Um, yeah, and I feel like that it's like obvious you work at Google. So of course you're gonna use the Google products, but like even before I was at Google, I was using them. <laughs> so I promise. <laughs> <laughs> what is, um, how do you define success? I was thinking about this when you guys asked Ashley this, but mm -hmm. I think for me, it's if, if I can leave work and I'm like on a high from a conversation that I've had with somebody that day or an event I attended or just anything like that where I can leave and I'm like, I have to go tell somebody about this. Like, this was awesome. Or I met this person today. This was so much fun. That is successful to me. And I feel like I've succeeded and I do every day. I'm like, oh my God, I met this person. And just right now, because I'm onboarding, I'm meeting so many people. Feel like I say that every day I'm like oh I met this new person and I want to be their best friend <laughs> but um even in like my day-to-day -day life too right if I'm reading a book and I'm like oh my gosh this was the best book ever I have to go tell somebody about that I'm I just that sort of all lends itself to being successful to me I love that <laughs> uh, and then when when you do have challenging days or when things you know do get hard um what what are some things that you do for self-care yeah. Um, so I, I love to go walk and I'll put my headphones in and listen to either like an audiobook or a podcast because I feel like the ABP or the administrative role that we're in is very people focused. So I am online talking to people all day long and that's through video chats too. Uh-oh. Can you guys still see me? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, we used to see you. Somebody's. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, so as I, was, as I was saying, it's very like front facing. I'm on, I'm meeting new people. I'm talking to people about different things. So for me to take care of myself, I need time during the day. I'm gonna go for a walk and listen to a book and not, and not talk. <laughs> I'm just gonna like zone out, listen to somebody else's story, listen to a podcast, um, walk my dog, stuff like that. Oh, that's awesome. And um, my, my other question for you is, you know, if you could turn back time to your teenage self to, you know, 17 years old, you're trying to figure things out. What, it, what are some things that you would tell yourself? Oh, I wish I would, I would probably tell myself not to, and I feel like this is Google's philosophy, like we've said, is bring your whole self to work, just to not be afraid to bring my whole self back then, right? I used to be so shy about about being like type A and my planner and how crazy it was or listening to country music, reading books. Like those were all things I loved. And I was always like, oh, I don't know if anyone else is going to be into this. But, and so I was sort of shy about it all. And I wish I could go back and be like, no, just, just be proud about it. Like know that you like to read and tell people you like country music or whatever it is. Um, just bring your whole self forward fully is what I would tell myself. That's great. That's, that's wonderful. I think a lot of, a lot of times like, you know, teens and, and our younger, you know, audiences need to hear that. Uh, Cause we're, we're always so caught up in like, you know, Instagram and, oh, what's that person doing? Like, why, why am I not, you know, like that person or something? Totally. So I, I really, I definitely agree with you. All right. Do you have any last piece of advice, anything that you can, you know, implore our audience members with last words? Yeah. Um, I think like what we said, how we were so surprised by Google having all these different roles. It's not just Google. Like there's so many companies out there that have all of these different roles in them. Like Netflix, you'd think probably like, oh, it's probably just like TV show people, movie people. I don't even know, but no, there's a whole slew of roles at Netflix, right? Facebook, all these other companies. So just being aware of 
and doing that homework of searching these companies and their roles. I think that's a huge help, just knowing. Okay. Thank you so much, Jessica, for your time and, you know, for all of your advice and for sharing your stories. Yeah, <laughs> stories thank with you. Us. Yeah. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll open it up to our Q&A if our audience members here, if you guys have any questions. You can like just go sing here, pop that in the chat box. All right, we have a question here coming in from Margarita. Could you talk a bit more about both of your interview processes? What kind of questions were you asked? So how about this? We'll start off with Ashley. What was your interview process like? Okay, sure. Um, it was, it started off with a couple of like phone interviews, I remember. Um, and then a lot of the questions focused on kind of like like on the job tasks like if you were presented with this situation how would you approach it um it's kind of funny though because back in 2012 when i first applied like there was like a lot of rumors going around about google asking like crazy questions in the interview like like how many jelly beans are in this ball jar but i didn't get any of that i, I just got like straightforward kind of how would you approach this task at work uh like like what about google interest you um, that kind of thing. And something that like, I've also, I don't know if it's because my, my mom said it or if I read it somewhere, but like one thing important in interviews is to also ask your own questions because you are interviewing the, the company or the person who's speaking to you as much as they are interviewing you just to make sure it's like a good fit and to show that you're like thoughtful and engaged. Mm, that's a good one. Jessica, how about you? Uh, what was your interview process like? Yeah, and I just went through this not too long ago, about mm -hmm. a month and a half ago. Um, and yeah, the crazy brain game question that the rumor is around Google is not true. I also did not get asked <laughs> the crazy questions. Um, something actually that I got asked that took me kind of by surprise that I'd never been asked in an interview was, okay, you get this role. Where do you want to be in three to five years from now in your career? And because I was so focused on the role I was applying for and wanting this role so badly. And I just was like, I don't even know what is that three to five years from now look like there's so many doors at Google. I can only see this one from my vantage point right now. So I have no idea how to even answer that. Um, but I think having that kind of like ahead of you, like, yeah, this would be a really great role. And then maybe it'll turn into this kind of role. And then maybe I'm also interested in this. Um, that was, yeah, it took me by surprise, honestly. <laughs> well, you did, you did real good. I mean, you're in your role now, <laughs> right? I, I guess, Jessica, I have a question for you since you just finished interviewing. Like, you know, what were, what were some, what are some tips that, or what are some things that you did to prepare for this interview? And after the interview, uh, what were some things that you did to, you know, kind of just reflect back on this interview? Yeah. So I took, and I did this for kind of all of my interviews I've ever done. I take the job app or the job description that's just online at, at google.com slash career. And I broke that down by all the different things they were looking for. I pulled out the hot words that kind of jumped out. So very organized, detail oriented, um, adaptable, those kind of things. And made sure I had examples for each of those things that they were looking for. Like, okay, yeah, I was adaptable in this situation in a past role, or I was able to roll with the flow in this kind of situation. Um, and then they do ask those situational questions that Ashley mentioned. So trying to network with as many people as I knew that were in a similar role and getting their insight and feedback from it. So I did a lot of homework in that sense where I met with other people in similar roles and asked, okay, if you're planning a 50 person event in Tokyo, what, what do you do? <laughs> How does that even look? What does that even look like? Um, and then after the interview, breaking it all down to, I went through and was like, okay, what questions came up that I was like, that took me by surprise. Like that one, I just told you. Um, yeah, I think that's, those are the big steps I took. I love that. Thank you. Ashley, do you have something to say? I said, yeah. yeah, I was going to say, um, in, in addition to what Jessica said, like, those are all great suggestions. One thing that I also did was um, kind of like as much research as I could on the execs that I knew I would be potentially supporting. So I like went and found news articles about them. I watched some of their like speeches online just to get a sense of like the person and the vibe. Because one thing in, in the admin role um, that can really contribute to your success is your relationship with your manager and like 
making sure you have like the right chemistry and like you're both kind of vibing together as opposed to being like at odds. So I could tell just from kind of like what I'd seen about them in the press and like the the kind of presence that they had um, in videos and stuff like that, that they'd be cool to work for. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. So I have a question that came in from Angela here. She asked, what majors did you both take in college? So I know Jessica, you mentioned that you majored in hospitality. Was there any other, um, any other like, I guess um, other, other degrees or cert certifications that you, you did for event plan or, or to get into your role, I mean? Um, so yeah, I majored in hospitality administration and then I minored in deaf studies. So that's where the sign language piece came in. But yeah, from day one, that's what I knew I wanted it and it fit. <laughs> Love that. How about you, Ashley? Yeah, and I majored in East Asian studies <laughs> with a focus on Japanese language and history. Because again, I was like, after college, I'm going to live and work in Japan. And um, actually, that was a piece of advice that I was going to leave for the group that like college is one of the few opportunities in life that you have a chance to like explore any kind of like thing that you're curious in in like a very kind of like a profound way, like, cause they have like the academics, the professors on campus, you have libraries, so many resources at your disposal. So I would say, even if, even if <laughs> you have a sense of like, um, like what can I do with this major? Or like, this isn't gonna help me get higher down the road. Like, like still take the time to explore that path because your major isn't necessarily tied to your the career that you're ultimately going to be in. Like, like look at Jessica and I. Neither one of us majored in like administrative business partnership, <laughs> but but we still made it. So it's all part of like kind of honoring your interests and like what you're passionate about. For sure, a hundred percent agree. Uh, I love that. I love that advice because I think a lot of times like we think like, oh, this is the job we're good. We, we, we need a major in this so we can get to that job. But I also think like, you know, with your own experiences and, you know, when you really show what you're passionate about and that you're willing to learn, I think you can land any kind of job as long as you, you can show what you can bring to the table. So I love that. Uh, I, I, I majored in criminal justice for my undergraduate degree. So <laughs> it definitely has nothing to do with librarianship. <laughs> Anyways, all right, team. So let's see. Do we have any more questions coming in from our? Uh, oh, out of curiosity, when did Ashley start learning Japanese? Okay, we have a question for you, Ashley. When did you start learning Japanese? Okay, so this is a um, yeah. This is funny. I, I was wondering if this would come up. So I started. I first started kind of like self-taught Japanese by watching this program that was on Georgia public television at like 4 a.m. called Irashai. And it was like, like it had like a teacher and kind of like local teens are all learning Japanese together. The, uh, the, the inspiration, if you will, was back in the late 90s was when like anime first started coming over to the United States. And I was like very ultimately majorly obsessed with Sailor Moon and thought like, what better way to enjoy Sailor Moon than to learn Japanese and read and like watch it in the original language. So um, started with the Georgia Public Television show and then kind of books on tape and then formally started studying Japanese in college. And then it just took off from there because we had classes every day. And then during my junior year, I did study abroad for a year. So yeah, it was just kind of a rapid progression once I got to college. That's awesome. That's so wonderful. Okay, thank you, Ashley and Jessica, for your time today. Do you feel your offices are going to stay remote or you know, work from home for the foreseeable future? Do you feel you can work from home more than typical office? So we'll start off with uh, Jessica. This question's coming in from Ed. <laughs> I, I really hope we don't stay work from home forever. And I don't think we will because Google kind of thrives on that people to people interactions and everything. Um, that's kind of a huge part of the culture, right, is being in the office and taking advantage of it and seeing everybody and the collaboration that happens. So I don't see that happening and I am very excited for the day we can go back into the office. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, where And how about for you, Ashley? Yeah, I was going to say similarly, um, I think what we've learned in the past year is that, yes, it's possible to do our work from home. And I think um, that there will still be an option to kind of, for people who want to have like a hybrid setup where you're in the office some days and then at home other days. Um, 
but yeah, like, like Jessica was saying, the in-person interactions and kind of the chemistry that happens in person, the, the fun conversations in the hallway or over the micro kitchen and like the fireside chats with all kinds of cool people and, and that kind of the dogs in the office, the like the, the hundred dogs in the office, like all of that <laughs> is something that people want to get back to. Awesome. So if you work for Google, you could bring your dog to work is, is what I've learned. <laughs> we, we need that at the library. All right. I have a question here for Ashley from Malia. She asked, uh, do you have any language learning tips? I want to become a multilingual and communicate with people both inside and outside my community. Since LA and the internet is so diverse, I also want to understand different cultures around the world. I feel that language learning is a really helpful skill for people to help and be compassionate with others. I love that. What I'm gonna say that? yes, 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 yes to all of that. <laughs> um, yeah, wow, language, I, I could do a whole other like session on language learning because that's something that I'm super excited and passionate about. Um, shameless plug, like YouTube is actually a great resource for learning languages because there's like a whole community of like polyglot YouTubers and other folks that talk about learning different languages online. Um, and then of course you have like channels that are there in the language, like the target language that you want to learn. You can watch like Chinese language dramas for free. You can watch like find your favorite Spanish YouTuber. There's all sorts, like there's K-pop, there's community generated subtitles. So you can like learn from what's there. Um, so that's one. And then I would say, yeah, the, like the, the important thing to kind of stay interested and motivated is to find something in that language that like hooks you, whether it's like manga for Japanese or K-pop or TV shows or, or music, like more broadly, dance, anything, something that hooks you and that gets you engaging in like material in the language that you're interested in. And then of course, um, finding like typical resources like textbooks and stuff that can help you nail the, the nuts and bolts of how the language works. Um, but yeah, also just going like go to if, when you're able, if you're able, go to a place where the target language is spoken. And actually, one of the things that I love about L.A. is that so many languages, world languages are spoken right here in the city. Like you can go to Koreatown and practice your Korean. In my neighborhood, I can practice my Spanish. Like you can go to Chinatown and practice like Mandarin or Cantonese. So um, there's a lot right here in Los Angeles that you can do to to help your language learning even while you're at home. For sure. Thank you for that, Ashley. I was going to say, Jessica, how about you? I know you love learning sign language. How do you practice, you know, your sign language every day or ASL? Yeah, and I also could also talk about this for days on end. I'm just so obsessed with it. But for me, I use YouTube, like Ashley said, I love it. And then I follow people on Instagram who are deaf or who are known for teaching sign language. Now the Marco, shameless plug for that one again. Like those different people on Instagram who you know are going to show you different signs. Like today, there's a ton of people showing like how to say Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, and yeah, going to the events. So when I was in college learning, I went to every single sign language event I could. And even though there were hearing people, it was a, it was just known fact that you turn off your voice for that event. So you always walked in and like turned a key on your throat because that meant like turn your voices off. This is a silent sign language event. So go to as many of those as you can, even if you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Awesome advice. I'm like contemplating, should I start a Vietnamese conversation <laughs> class on Zoom or something? All right, we have a question here from Lisa. Um, she asked, what are some other employee benefits at Google, such as vacation days, medical, dental? Uh, Ashley, I know you've been at Google for a while, so can you speak on that? Yeah, um, all of the things that Lisa mentioned are covered. And also, um, as, as a new mom, I can also say that I appreciate the, the generous maternity leave benefit that we had there. So I was able to take six months of work off at full pay to like, yeah, I know, yeah, which, Let's just say right now, maternity leave should be something available to like everyone because <laughs> because like motherhood and like new parenting and all that. It, it's it's a lot. And it, I'm still adjusting to things even now, seven months in. So I was definitely grateful to have that time. Um, so there's that. And then every now and then we'll get credits for things like one thing that was super helpful when this whole work from home situation started was that Google gave us cash to buy office furniture 
and like they were able to like send us monitors and things like that to help approximate like those same kind of environment we would have at work um, in our homes. Uh, we mentioned the dogs, the dogs in the office <laughs> for like stress relief and encouragement to get out and exercise. Also, um, they have like all kinds of wellness amenities like like a masseuse and a gym and things like that. A nap room, which for the record, I never had time to take a nap at work. So I'm just going to say that, but it's there <laughs> if you if you do that time to use it. Um, so yeah, all, all kinds of things. And then the food too, which is probably the thing I miss the most, the, the office cafeteria with like breakfast and lunch and like so many, so many, so many more choices than I have in my home kitchen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> plenty of, plenty of benefits. Yeah, those, those sound like some great benefits. <laughs> Get Los Angeles Public Library. Where are we at? That's awesome. Um, yeah, guys, I, I love everything. I love all the questions that that um, all of our audience members have been asking, and all the answers. They're just so amazing. I know we're running a little bit over time. I just uh, wanted to mention again, like you know, we do have a survey there that Jessica linked in the chat box. Please, please do take a moment to fill that out for us. Uh, we will share some of the comments with our guest speakers and they're totally anonymous. So if there's something that you really want to, you know, um, share with them um, because you may be a little shy, like, you know, definitely type that in there and we'll, we'll share our, your, our, your answers with them. So um, now that we're on our last, you know, minute here, do are there any last questions, anything at all from our audience members? Um, uh, coming in. Jessica, do you have any, uh, Jessica Levy, do you have anything else that you, that we need to, uh, let our audience members know? Uh, I think we have a program next week, right? Lynn? Yes. So next week we have a, a program of featuring careers in aviation. I have a wonderful friend of a friend who is a pilot and he will be coming on to talk a little bit about, a bit about his job. And then I also have a very close friend who works at who works at Boeing uh, in Seattle. So hopefully he will come on to talk about uh, his ex experience of building planes. So uh, yes, oh, we have a question here from Pamela. How does one build thick skin in your field of work? How do you handle criticism? Ooh, that's a great question. I think it applies to all areas of life. So I'll start off with Ashley, how about you? How do you, how do you handle, how do you build thick skin? Yeah, yeah, this is this is something that I'm still working on because like you know, when you when you're a perfectionist, it's like like criticism is like like kryptonite. It's like like uh, it can be <laughs> debilitating. Um, but the the way what I what I tell my rational self when I can like separate from my emotional self is that like 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 feedback is important. At Google, we like to say feedback is a gift, and rather than focusing in in the moment on how like how how negatively it can make you feel. You should focus on like how you can take that feedback and use it to improve your performance for the next time. So that like, okay, I messed up on this this time, but like, how can I make sure that this doesn't happen again? Or how can I make sure that like next time I'm getting good feedback about this situation? So it's just kind of, um, yeah, trying to trying to spin it into like a positive and like an opportunity to learn versus focusing on kind of like its negative impact, I think. But yeah, it's it's not easy. <laughs> for sure, no, I 100% agree. That's great advice. How about for you, Jessica? How do you build thick skin and how do you handle criticism? Yeah, somebody just gave me this advice too recently was, um, especially when you're in the learning phase too, like I know I'm gonna mess up. So just be humble with it, know it's gonna happen, own it. But then somebody else told me to try to separate the person from the comment too. So just because it's, it's is, feedback or something that's constructive criticism and it's hard to hear and hard to read and don't let it tamper your view of that person and just kind of separate those two things like even though this person didn't use a million exclamation points and emojis at the end of their sentence doesn't mean they don't still love working with you and value that relationship it's just it's just feedback it is what it is and so just I think separating those two things in my head has helped tremendously <laughs> That's great, great advice, wonderful advice. Oh, wow. All right. Well, um, 
you know, Jessica Levy and I, we are just, we're so happy and we're so grateful for both Ashley and Jessica for uh, sharing their, you know, life stories with us about their job at Google and YouTube and just everything. And we hope that, you know, what we learned from both Ashley and Jessica today will, you know, guide all of you into, uh, you know, the world of careers uh, once you leave high school or go to college, wherever it is that you go in life. Um, we just hope that it, you feel a little bit more confident now that you have these answers and tools and resources to get you where you want to go. So thank you so much, Ashley and Jessica, for being with us today, for being with the Los Angeles community. We're so grateful. And we hope to uh, hopefully bring you guys back one of these days. Maybe if you have a cool language program you want to do for us, it's cool. You know, <laughs> we would love to have you. Yes, thank you so much for having us today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to.